Hi, everybody, and welcome. It is Wednesday racing down at Durbanville, Hollywood Bets Durbanville. Seven races are carded today, so that means that that place accumulator will get underway with the first race. That's where we're going to start. As you know, we're shortening up our previews here on Clocking the Gallop. Well, certainly I am. Um, and making them more succinct uh, with a view to changing uh, some of the style of our broadcasting. So this will not be long, but uh, we will nevertheless go through the important um, part of the race meeting, which is going to be the place accumulator play. And speaking of which, you'll see that on uh, various platforms today, our Take a Bet initiative with TAB features a place accumulator, which does look pretty straightforward, but uh, you never know. Maybe one or two legs, there could be a surprise, uh, although things look straightforward. So let's start with the first race where number eight head girl certainly sets a standard, but uh, she is drawn eight. Um, she clearly looks the one to beat, but there might be some improvement uh, in the likes of number five, Priceless. Well, not an improvement. That's a first time of Priceless. Um, good pedigree. And uh, there's been a touch of money, as you see, for number five, Priceless. Plus, of course, that combination of Brett Crawford and Louis Cotter is absolutely deadly. So daughter of Dynasty out of the goalkeeper mayor. Uh, it's a good family. And it has been retained by Ridgemont. So I think there's a lot of positive and positive signs on number five, Priceless. Mm -hmm. Number three, Simply Beautiful, drawn nicely. Blinkers on Richard Faree. Had some form earlier on, seems to have trained off, but I think she can bounce back. Um, at Durnville in particular, she should benefit from that draw. And a touch of money for another first time, a number two, who is owned and bred uh, by Barry Irwin's team, Valor. So um, number eight head girl, but... Um, there wasn't any winners out of that I'll slip away form. There's been five uh, starts according to the computer form with that. So I wouldn't say it's the most prolific of form. And of course, that does affect the second leg, I believe, as we'll get there to Strawberry Light, who comes from the same uh, form line of I'll slip away. The difference there is she was uh, doing some low flying. And although there weren't any winners out of that first form line either, I think in that company, number one, Strawberry Light, certainly looks hard to beat. She's shortened now to five and a half to ten. If there is to be a shock in that race, well, it might come from number five, F8, who is a daughter of Futura, and uh, Dean Canamo trains that. She's going to jump from a five draw. She's been drawn 10 out of 13, 10 out of 11 at a previous two starts at Durbanville, so um, she probably will fare a little better from a kind of draw as i think will number four teardrop we was drawn 14 out of 14 and 14 out of 14 at durnville her last two and um both those fillies i think will benefit from running off a better draw so strawberry light looks hard to oppose in the first leg of the pick six but as i pointed out earlier on there's no winners uh, from those couple of form lines but um at the same time there doesn't seem to be too much opposition Let's move on to race three, and uh, I'll tell you my take on three. Interesting, because William Rufus was my first choice, and uh, she comes from, he rather, comes from the Dave the King form line, and ran okay, was doing some low flying himself from an 11 draw at Durbanville last time, and uh, was uh, flying up behind ensuing from a five draw with that run under the belt. He looks like the natural improver, and I'm not surprised that there's been money for him. That's race three, number five, William Rufus. Uh, number three run for me, improved last time with the blinkers on. Um, Grant for Nico Grimes from a nice draw of three. And um, I suspect that he will also improve a little bit further on. Uh, for me, number one, Intimidator's kind of exposed, really. I mean, he's a three-year-old. This is his eighth career start already. He will benefit from a one draw on Richard Faree, but he seems pretty exposed. Um, does number one intimidate? I'm sure he'll run a nice race, but uh, in terms of improvement, you would think that the likes of five William Rufus and three run for me could improve. Uh, even the likes of six Bournemouth, uh, that's Brett Crawford and Louis Cotter again, that's the Camford Cliffs. Um, drifted in the betting on debut, wasn't totally disgraced and did have his tongue over the bit, so um, he could improve certainly from that yard. And then the four year old number seven, Barn Bugle who I think ran behind what, well, well, what a thief will run. And I think that's the same yard. I think that's the Crawford yard. So um, if you are pushing the envelope a bit, maybe look at that one. But for me, William Rufus, definitely the improver in race three. On to race four we go. Well, there's been money for number two, Autumn Moon. Um, I could have bought Autumn Moon 
once, twice, three times over with the money I've done on Autumn Moon. So uh, I wish the connections all the best and I hope he does win for uh, the team. But not for me, I'm afraid, uh, because I'm just uh, not in the business of throwing good money after bad. So Autumn Moon, who, by the way, the reason I've been backing him because he's been running in uh, maiden special weights when he's pretty well in, carrying 57, 56 and a half. Here he's got to carry 60 again, so not for me. Um, six, Ponte Petre, good debut and uh, more improvement to come surely from this verse in Getterix, but it was in Durban, it was at Scottsville, and as a result, I give number seven, Night Tiger, quite a bit of a sneak here. He's had the three starts last time behind What a Thief. He was running on quite nicely, but he didn't have a good draw. He was drawn 11 out of 12. Here he's not particularly well drawn either, but it's a smaller field. He's drawn seven out of eight. So Night Tiger, for me, could be the value in race four. On to race five. And uh, interesting, number one, Night Song. When I saw Night Song, my face and ears and eyes and toes lit up because I thought this is going to be my shrewdy of the day, number one, Night Song. But then... Um, I saw he had 62 kilograms. I don't know if the handicap has been that lenient on him. I, he was an 84 at one stage, so he's dropped down nine. Uh, he might just have to drop down another point or two to be completely competitive. But he, he does get Grant for Nico, which is a bonus, and he's got good course form. And Grant rides very well for Michael Stewart. So, uh, And he's got the one draw. So Night Song has some positives. As I say, though, 62 kilograms still is quite an impost to carry. Um, and as a result, I defaulted back to the three-year-olds, which are uh, number 10, Cheeky Laddie, who don't, obviously doesn't have a good draw. He's drawn 10 out of 10, but uh, he was dropped out last time and ran on pretty well. I'm sure that'll be the same plans for uh, Dean Canamea, uh, Jahan Mulher, but Kaya Stables, and of course, Keegan DeMello. They'll just give him a chance from that 10 draw, and I do think he'll run well particularly as he's getting two kilograms from the favourite, number six, Inna Morare, who uh, is the form horse in the race. That was a terrific run behind Le Mans last time, and he's got to be a big runner. So uh, in uh, order of preference, perhaps uh, value-wise, anyway, 10, 6, and uh, my lurker, number one um, in that race. Okay, let's move on to race six, uh, penultimate leg. Well, Shantastic uh, was very... Impressive on debut. I think he's Waterbury Lane's brother um, off the top of my head. And I think I've mentioned this before. I tried to buy her. Uh, sorry, I said brother, but it's a sister. Waterbury Lane's sister. I tried to buy her at uh, the sales, but um, I'm afraid that Anthony Delpech and team, uh, the pockets were too deep. Um, but I did really like her. And she won very well on debut. And last time from a 10 out of an 11 draw, ran really well taking off behind Veronique. So, fantastic. Just go down so you can see the betting. I'm not surprised to see her from 33 to 10 into 28 to 10. Although, actually, if I had priced up on this race, I probably would have priced her up at uh, 22 to 10 to begin with. Uh, the dangers, well, they've got to be some. I mean, number two, Happy Chance, ran nicely on debut behind Queen of Sparta, who she reimposes, reopposes here. But I think that since then, Happy Ch Chance has be more progressive. Queen of Sparta's last run was a bit disappointing. And she's also giving her two and a half kilograms. So you've got to prefer the chances of happy chance in race six against number one, Queen of Sparta. I don't see too many spooks beyond that. There's some money for Betty Boop, but she's got to carry 60 and a half. That's a, quite a bit of pudding for a three-year-old filly. She's giving two and a half kilograms to Shantastic, and she's giving three and a half kilograms to happy chance. So, um, that seemed to me to be quite a tall order. Uh, a roughie, number seven, fly to Rio. Very disappointing last run, but maybe she's crying out for the 1,400-metre trip. Um, she's only a run over the distance. Or, well, when I say only, she has won over the distance, um, and uh, maybe that's what she needs, the uh, 1,400. Anyway, she's uh, 20 to 1, so... And she's only carrying 52 kilograms. That's number seven, fly to Rio. It would be my roughie in the race. But as you've heard, I'm pretty bullish about Shantastic and Happy Chances' chances in race six. Right, let's move on to race seven. Last race of the day. Well, the obvious horse here is number six, Catalia, who has act naturally 
well beaten at the weights and should confirm that number six Catalina. She's a daughter of Silvano out of a Captain Almere. So I would imagine she could only get better. That was a terrific run last time. Louis and Cockrell rides, Brett Crawford, the trainer, and main chance, of course, um, kept her. So that's understandable based on her pedigree. Uh, but she is a, a three-year-old. And um, I looked for maybe a four-year-old who could be competitive. Now, my old chestnut, who's actually a bay, number eight, Veronique, came back to uh, uh, catch my eye. Because as you know, at the ultimate start, I tipped her at a massive price. I actually got 33 to one, and she uh, actually gutted me. I've told you the whole story again. One more stride, she would have won. I would have got the lot. But... She did win very nicely last time as well, which doesn't surprise me because I think she's in a rich vein of form. And although she's drawn eight here, she is a four-year-old getting five kilograms from Catalea. So um, she's certainly going to be competitive, I believe, just carrying 53 and a half kilograms from JP Fanamera retains the ride. So six uh, clearly sets a standard. Eight Veronique, though, perhaps the value in the race. Uh, beyond that, well, all sorts of uh, possibilities should those fluff their lines. Number one, Enchanted Creek is actually reasonably well in here, I believe, of 57 kilograms, but she doesn't have great Durbanville form, but uh, she has drawn one. Two Everglades is a four-year-old filly. Uh, she's been poorly drawn at her last two starts, nine out of 11 at Durbanville, 10 out of 10. Here she's drawn two with Sandele and Bele on, and she could upset uh, could number two Everglades. And so too could the other older filly, number three, Parisian Girl, who's a daughter of Jackson, She's drawn three and she's got some honest form. So I think she'll be pretty much in the mix. Interesting last race. Catalia clearly uh, has a bright future. But I just thought number eight, Veronique, um, getting quite a bit of pudding still from the favourite uh, might make her presence felt again. So that's the take on today's racing. I need to remind you, which I already have, but I'll remind you again. There is a take a bet on the channel. And I'll also be doing a soccer shop dot bet price piece. We had uh, success yesterday with Rose of Bayou, um, who we were very bullish about, and uh, what a really nice race. So hopefully, you got the lot there. There'll be another soccer shop dot bet later today. Although it might have dual purpose because there's some huge Premier League football tonight. Not least of all, Manchester United versus Tottenham. So lots of good football tonight from Neil and the team. Have a good day's racing.